Good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you. We welcome you in worship this morning at Coronado Community United Methodist Church. And those of you who may be watching online, we're glad you're here with us too. We want you to know we are located on Beachside in New Smyrna at 201 South Peninsula. Hope to see you here and worship in person sometime in the future. Now we invite you to take a deep breath in and let it out. We seek to come into God's presence now, preparing our hearts for worship. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We invite you to stand as you're able as we join in singing our opening hymns.
As we remain standing, we invite you to join with us. We read together our statement of faith from the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. We invite you to turn to your neighbor now. Let's pass the peace of Christ this morning. It is so fun to watch you enjoying one another. Good morning, peace be with you. It's great to see you here this morning. Uh, our liturgist for today is Pam Anderson and she will be coming in just a moment. Uh, let's prepare our hearts for prayer as we sing together. Let us pray. God, we pray for our troubled world. We thank you, you labor to renew creation, that you seek not to judge, but to save, not to destroy, but to create. We praise you that you call the nations to peace and the peoples to justice. With you, we mourn that many around the world still fall in war's violence and that many become homeless, hungry, and thirsty in the wake of war. We pray for people everywhere who struggle for freedom before those who rule through terror, who plunder the poor and imprison the just. I invite you to use your own prayers. Save us, O oh God, from helplessness. 
Speak to us and show us each our part to play in your mission of saving the world through your love. Cleanse us from all that keeps us from serving and loving our neighbors in integrity of word and deed. We pray to you in the strong name of Jesus Christ. Help us to live the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The General Conference of the United Methodist Church will be held April 23rd through May 3rd, uh, starting just a little over a week from now, in Charlotte, North Carolina. The General Conference has been unable to gather since 2019 due to the COVID pandemic. And so some of you may be saying, what is the General Conference? Uh, the General Conference is the decision-making body of the United Methodist Church. It is made up of equal parts of lay and clergy delegates from the worldwide United Methodist Church connection of congregations. Uh, the General Conference meets every four years for worship and conversation and discernment and legislative work. This is a significant time of change and hope in our denomination. It's also likely that over the next few weeks, our denomination is going to be in the news. And so, when you hear something or see something, please consider the source carefully. Uh, if you have any questions about what you see or what you hear, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. You are never a bother. Please get a hold of me. Uh, last Friday, we sent out a special email with more details about the General Conference, a link to the General Conference website. You can actually watch the live stream of General Conference, and a link to a digital version of the prayer guide a printed version of the prayer guide. I'm being Vanna right now. <laughs> a printed version of the prayer guide and more information on the General Conference is also available this morning in the back of the sanctuary. Your prayers for the future of our denomination and the General Conference matter. And so, I would invite you to pray one or more of these prayers starting today through May 3rd, the end of the General Conference. You are, of course, welcome and encouraged to add your own prayers as well. Thank you for being you, and thank you for your prayers for General Conference. I'd like to invite the ushers forward for a morning offering. God, we thank you that we have siblings, brothers and sisters all over the world. We thank you for a big, beautiful connection of folks who love you and follow you in many places. Uh, we, we consider that a privilege and a gift. And we thank you for welcoming us into your family as well. We pray that you would bless and multiply this offering that through it, many may know you, many may know you're welcome, many may know your help. We ask this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. amen. Thank you. 
Amen. I invite you to take out the Bible that you brought with you. Maybe you've got it on your phone or your tablet. There are also red pew Bibles near you. You are very welcome to use them. And uh, we are beginning a new uh, sermon series today, How to Love Your Enemy. And uh, we will be uh, in this sermon series for the next few weeks uh, leading up to Pentecost. And so today we are going to be in Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2. So that will be more towards the back of your Bible if you are using a paper Bible. Uh, It's a teeny weeny little book, so if you need to use the table of contents, that's okay too, uh, to find it. Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2. And while you're making uh, your your way to Philippians 2, there is a... uh, scripture reading plan to go along with this service, uh, this sermon series. And so you are uh, hopefully received one of these on the way in, but just in case you didn't, uh, they will be in the weekly worship newsletter, which which comes out on on usually Saturdays. And uh, you can also pick one up on the way out this morning. So, So lots of resources for you this morning. So the entire sermon series is, is based on a piece of scripture out of the Sermon on the Mount. And so that is Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 43, and we've got it for you on the screen. So let's all read Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 43 together. Jesus said, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your Father in heaven. So as followers of Jesus Christ, we are called by Jesus to foster peace and truth. Uh, Even when we are faced with evil or controversy or division or conflict. But the big question is, how do we do this, right? You know, it sounds good, but how do we do it? Well, over the next few weeks, we're going to talk about five really important things uh, in order to uh, love our enemy. And so these are the five things. Let's read them together. The mind of Christ, see people as people, listen deeply, a heart of peace, and do good. So what do you, what do you notice about these practices? They're all positive. Great. You notice anything else? Yeah. There's caring and acceptance involved. Non-judgmental. Possible. Possible. How nice is that? How nice. How nice is that? So here's a couple of things I noticed about these five things. I noticed that these practices would help any relationship. Not just, not just a relationship that you have with an enemy. And that most of these practices are internal work. They are soul work, motivation, you know, what's my motivation in this situation? Internal work. And so the truth is, is that we cannot control the behaviors or thoughts of others. How many of us want that magic wand that we can just go, you know, Avada Kedavra? No, not that one. Um, But... uh, we just, we want to be able to do that, but first of all, it's not of God, and it's not real, so, um, so we can't. We cannot tr- control the behavior or thoughts of others. We, we can only work on ourselves. We can only work on ourselves, and so being a person who can love an enemy is... It takes self-awareness, it takes practice, and it takes the grace of the Holy Spirit at work in us. It takes all of that. So, 
as we get going in this, this is an important thing. If you hear nothing else today, please hear this. None of these practices tell you to stay in an abusive relationship or tell you to stay in a dangerous relationship. That is not okay. And so if you are in one of these situations, abusive or dangerous, um, we are here to help you. We are glad to help you, okay? All right, so we have said that. Uh, we're gonna start with a, uh, a great commercial that came out a few years ago. And so let's, uh, let's watch. I would describe my political views as the new right. I say that I'm left. Feminism today is man-hating. I would describe myself as a feminist 100%. I don't believe that climate change exists. We're not taking enough action on climate change. I think it's about time these people got off the high horse and started looking for credible problems that actually exist. It's absolutely critical that trans people have their own voice. That's not right. You can't, you know, you're, you're a man, be a man, or you're a female, be a female. Women do need to remember that we need you to have our children. Could I be friends with someone that says a woman's place is in the home? Um... Right, OK, well, I'm an expert at flat packs. If you have any trouble, just watch me. So it looks like I've got your instructions here. I think so. Let me help you. Let's have just that bit there. Describe what it is like to be you in five adjectives. OK, frustrating. Dedicated. Opinionated. Lucky. Ambitious, offensive, solemn. I have ups and downs. Strong. I don't want to say attacked, misunderstood. Name three things you and I have in common. We're both male, we're both confident, and we're both loudly spoken. We know each other better than people who've known each other for 10 minutes should. You seem quite ambitious and positive, and you've got this really, um, got a glow. Do you know what I'm saying? Your aura's pretty cool. I'm sensing. Are you uh, former military or something? People have said that, but there is no, really? there is no history. So are you then Ex. ex-military? Um, yeah. If you're ex-military, I'm very proud of you already. Well... So. I grew up uh, in a bit of a rough state. I've experienced homelessness. I've known what it's like to have absolutely nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm definitely most grateful just, just for life. We've only just met, but I think you're the sort of person that would listen to me and we'd have a discussion rather than argue. Yeah, you could hang out with, man. Let's go. Come on, Chance. Goodness sake. You're right, mate. Fitter than a look. Perfect. Oh, yeah. There you go. It's basically, I think we just bought a bar. Yeah. OK. Here you are. Each take a bottle and place it on its corresponding markings on the bar. Attention, please now stand to watch a short film. Feminism today is definitely an excuse for misandry, man-hating. If somebody said to me that climate change is destroying the world, then I'd say that is total piffle. So transgender, it is very odd. We're not set up to understand or see things like that. I am a daughter. A wife. I am transgender. I feel like the battle for feminism definitely isn't done. The fight is never going to be over, if I'm honest with you. You now have a choice. You may go or you can stay and discuss your differences over a beer. <laughs> I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> You're happy for a second, then. Well, I'm having a drink. I'm having a drink. Yeah. I want to discuss. Beer. Yeah, beer and discuss. Cheers. At the end of the day, mate. About I've reaching out to people, with you. yeah. And, you know, even if you wanted to convince people about your point, the productive thing to do would be to sit it's down engage. and have a beer. It's engage. It's engage. 
I've been brought up in a way where everything's black and white. But life isn't black and white. Yeah, I'm just me. <laughs> yeah. Smash the patriarchy. <laughs> I'll give you my mobile number, you give me yours, uh -huh. and we'll keep in touch. I'd have to tell my girlfriend that I'll be texting another girl. <laughs> she might be a bit upset with that, but I'll have to get round there. I'll have to tell my girl that she'll have to lump it. All right. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Um, this is probably a best of all possible worlds example. Uh, but what often happens when we come face to face with someone that we mistrust, uh, someone that we disagree with deeply? What often happens? Yeah, yeah lots of things can happen. And a lot of that is connected to our mind. And so that's why we're talking about what does it mean to have the mind of Christ. So, when we are afraid, or when we feel threatened, when we are reminded of a hurtful experience, we can be triggered. And so, everybody put your hand back here on the back of your head. Oh, doesn't that feel good? Okay, where, where your head connects to your neck is uh, the red part on the illustration. It's called your brain stem. And when we feel threatened or afraid or hurt or any of those things, we start thinking out of this part of our brain. Uh, this is the most ancient part of our brain, and it is the most animalistic. And so when we start thinking out of this far part of our brain, we think like an animal. It is fight, right? It is fight mode whether we are aggressors like a tiger or whether we are defenders like a skunk. We can go into fight mode. We can go into flight mode. We just, we're gone like a deer, right? Uh, we can go into freeze mode like a turtle. You just hunker down. Um, it's like running away in place, right? just hunker down like a turtle, or we can fawn. Um, fawn was one that I wasn't very familiar with, and fawning is people-pleasing. Fawning is, can become codependency. Fawning is ignoring your own needs in order to take care of somebody else's needs in order to keep the peace. Uh, it's ensuring that you are just helpful and friendly as possible, um, responding to criticism with just praise and, you know, um, never being able to say no. That's fawning. And so when, you know, which one do you tend to go to is a great kind of self-awareness question. Uh, the next place, the blue place on the chart kind of midbrain is uh, your limbic system. And this, uh, back here, when we're in survival mode, it is us against the world, right? It is, it is all about me, 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 me. When we get in the middle, it, uh, I have found a little tribe of people that I feel confident with, I, I trust. There's a little safety and belonging with this tribe and uh, we're very like-minded, and so we kind of hunker down together and we can throw rocks at everybody else. Uh, limbic middle brain is like blame central. It's your fault, it's your fault, you know, you know all of that. Uh, that's the middle. Then we have the front. Okay, so everybody put your hand right here. Ooh, that feels good too. Right, we have the front. If we have more safety and belonging, I know who I am in Christ. I am, I am safe. I have belonging in Christ. Right? We have safety and belonging. We can move to the front, which is the most developed part of our brain. This is, um, this is the prefrontal uh, lobes. It's the forebrain. It's where executive functioning happens. This is what we could call the mind of Christ functioning out of this part of our brain. Uh, this is the only part of our brain where we can be creative, 
where we can be sacrificial, where we, be, can we, we can be collaborative, we can be forward thinking, right? And so when, when we are functioning out of this front part of our brain, this mind of Christ part of our brain, we, when we find ourselves in a situation where all of a sudden we're like, oh, um, you know, something's going on when I'm having a conversation with this person. Uh, we can start asking questions instead of fight, flight, freeze, fawn. Instead of back here, we can start asking some questions. Wow, what's going on that I'm feeling this way? You know? Um, what is, is it reminding me of something or am I sensing something? You know, what's going on? Another thing we can ask is, you know, what's important to me? And what's important to this other person? You know? Am I really threatened or am I just uncomfortable? That's, that's a great question. Am I really in danger or am I just uncomfortable? Right? And so in Paul's letter to the Philippians, Paul encourages the followers of Jesus uh, to be united with God through Christ and united to one another in the way that they think, which will, of course, influence the way that they live and the way that they love and the way that they serve. And so this idea of being, you know, one with Christ and one with each other um, is cultivating the mind of Christ. And this mind is, is uh, servant-hearted. And so those, those two go together. Look with me at Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 1. If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, right? Safety, belonging, consolation from love. Any sharing in the spirit. We need the spirit in order to be up here. Any compassion any sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, right? That's brainstem stuff. But in humility, regard others as better than yourself. Let each of you look not to your own interests, right? But to the interests of others. Okay? It's okay to look after ourselves while we are looking out for, for others as well. We can do that. Verse 5. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. The ability to exploit someone else is a brainstem thing, not, not a front of the brain thing. But emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has also exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This section right here was one of the first uh, statements of faith of the early church. And we still have it. Verse 12. Therefore, my beloved... Just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We have a part to play, right? For it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure, right? 
We can't control the thoughts and behaviors of others. We can only work on ourselves. And this takes self-awareness, and it takes practice, and it takes God who is at work in us. It takes the grace of the Holy Spirit. And so, how will you foster, how will you cultivate peace and truth this week by cultivating the mind of Christ? Let's pray. God, we thank you for the chance to change, the chance to be more healthy and more whole, and the chance to bring your healing and wholeness into the world. We pray that you would make us one with you and one with each other one with ourselves, one with the earth. And we thank you that your spirit is at work in us, making it possible. If this is the desire of your heart, I invite you to join me in saying amen. amen. Uh, a theme song we're going to use for this sermon series is called Make Us One. And so... Uh, I'll, I'll sing it for you in case you don't know it, and then we'll all sing it together. Make us one, Lord. Make us one. Holy Spirit, make us one. Let your love flow so Now for a couple of announcements about Holy Week giving. Our Monday Thursday service was combined worship with Edgewater United Methodist Church and Community United Methodist Church in Daytona. The total mission offering was $1,101. It'll be divided evenly among the three food pantries associated with those congregations. Think of all the households who will have meals on their table thanks to your generosity. Thanks to God. Our Easter mission offering for Residing Hope, formerly known as the Children's Home, totaled $5,935. Think of the vulnerable children and teens who will have counseling, resources, food, safe shelter, and clothing because of your gifts. The main campus of Residing Hope is located right here in Volusia County in Enterprise. Contact the church office if you're interested in more information on this vital ministry, in a campus tour, or in volunteering. Our monthly Lunch and Learn will take place this Thursday, April 18th at 11.30 in the Fellowship Hall. Greg Allen will make a presentation on home safety, followed by lunch. Thanks for registering in advance and inviting your friends. We now welcome Dan Holliday, who will come with a special announcement from our administrative team.
Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. <clears throat> uh, today, the Florida Conference, uh, all over the conference, the United Methodist Church, um, the uh, congregations are actually finding out who their clergy uh, pastoral assignments are for the 24-25 uh, season. So the, that begins July 1 and runs till uh, June, uh, the end of June next year. So uh, it is uh, my honor to announce to all of you that Pastor Lisa and Pastor Stacy uh, have been appointed for Coronado uh, for another year. Uh, Pastor Lisa will be with us uh, again full time. Pastor Stacy will be with us part time and will also serve part time at uh, Edgewater United Methodist Church. So uh, please uh, congratulate them, uh, I guess, uh, as you leave today. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Dan. you to stand as you're able. Join with me. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that all unity may one day be restored. And the Beloved of God, what is our mission? Building community rooted in God's love, inviting all to grow in Christ, engaging with service and compassion. 
Friends, we hope that you will stick around for a little bit. We hope you'll head into the courtyard, enjoy the beautiful weather, and enjoy one another. Have a great conversation. Have something to eat. Have something to drink. Uh, make sure everybody knows that they are welcome and wanted. And so, go now in peace to make peace. Go. Go. Go to love. Go to serve. Go with the blessing and power of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We invite you to join in singing with us our closing chorus, Go Now in Peace. See